was the whole message preached right there, wasn't it? <clears throat> you know, there's events throughout the year that always bring us to certain thoughts and ideas, even sermons that are preached. And one thing that nobody really talks to you about when you first become a pastor is how do you present Christmas, Easter, different events like that. How do you present it differently every year? How do you do that? Because it's the same story. How do you tell it differently every year? How do you spend that time doing that? Um, as a congregation, you enjoy hearing the, the stories, but at the same time, you've heard it before. And it becomes almost mundane sometimes when it's continued to be the same way. This year as I was seeking, God, how do I work towards that story, but do something a little different so that we can look at Jesus in a light that is so personal. And the series that God gave me was called The One. It is an Easter series that we'll finalize next week. But we began this series with realizing, as did many of the people in that day, that Jesus was the one, he is the one we're looking for. People are always looking for something. They need something to be fulfilled in their life. They're, they're searching for a, a job, money, a spouse, uh, something, a child, something to fulfill them. Jesus is the one the only one that can fulfill you. And we began talking about that, that he is the one you're looking for. And then we moved on last week to knowing that he is the leader that we should follow. He is the leader. Jesus came in in that day and, and, and he called out to disciples that followed him and became followers of him. And once he was uh, crucified and resurrected, those disciples went out into all the world sharing the gospel message. And they continued to teach and people continued to follow the word of Jesus Christ. And that's why, if you know him today, that's one of the reasons why you do because they were given that commission to go and tell. And we should follow him, but we should also strive to be like him, to continue to share that same word that he shared all the way up through his crucifixion and resurrection. Today, I want to introduce you to someone. I want to introduce you to the healer. In that day, <clears throat> one of the things that Jesus did in, early in his ministry is he healed. People would come to him from all around, and he would lay hands on them, and he would heal them from their infirmities. He would take care of their blindness. He would help them to be able to see. He healed leprosy. He even raised some from the dead. Jesus was the healer, and so because of that, the word of him spread. And that was one of the very things that so many people came to him for, was because there were things in their life that they needed healing from. And they would come to hear what he had to say, hoping that they could be healed, even one that, if I could only touch the hem of his garment, a woman who was afflicted with the issue of blood for so many years, and she had such faith that if she could just touch him, she knew she would be healed, and she was. And Jesus pointed out the great faith because she didn't have to be touched by him. She didn't even have to be seen by him. She just knew if she could just reach out to him, she would be healed, and she was. In our life today, we have so many things that go on in our life. We need a healer. I want you to look with me to Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5, and we're going to cover verses 17 through 26. Luke chapter 5, 17 through 26. If you have your Bible, take a look at it there. If not, it'll be on the screen for you. Luke chapter 5. 
17 through 26. <clears throat> One day he was teaching, and there were some Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting there who had come from every village of Galilee and Judea and from Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present for him to perform healing. And some men were carrying a bed, a man who was paralyzed, and they were trying to bring him in and set him down in front of him, but not finding any way to bring him in because the crowd, they went up to the roof and let him down through the tiles with his stretcher into the middle of the crowd in front of Jesus. Seeing their faith, he said, Friend, your sins are forgiven. The scribes and the Pharisees began reasoning, saying, Who is this man who speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sin but God alone? But Jesus, aware of their reasonings and their thoughts, answered and said to them, <coughs> Why are you reasoning in your hearts? Which is easier to say, Your sins have been forgiven you, or to say, Get up and walk. But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, get up, pick up your stretcher, and go home. Immediately he got up before them and picked up what he had been lying on and went home, glorifying God. They were all struck with astonishment and began glorifying God. And they were filled with fear, saying, we have seen remarkable things today. <coughs> we have seen remarkable things today. There are so many things to teach in this passage. The, I mean, we could spend four weeks alone teaching on this passage at least. There are so many things on this passage, but today we're only going to talk about a few. So the first thing that I want us to see is the friends of the man. The friends of the man who are bringing him to Jesus. You see, the man was unable to get up and come to Jesus. He was a paralytic. He was afflicted with uh, paralysis. He could not walk. But these friends, they saw that he needed help. He needed healing. And they decided to bring him to Jesus. So they knew where Jesus was speaking. And they knew what was going on. Perhaps they had heard about Jesus or even seen him heal someone else. And they decided that we're going to take this friend, we're going to bring him to Jesus. He can't go on his own, but we're going to bring him to Jesus. And they did. But you see, they were met with a problem. They brought him to Jesus and they couldn't get in. They cared about their friend so much that even though, <coughs> pardon me, <coughs> They couldn't get in the front door. They decided they were going to do whatever it took to get him an audience with Jesus. The thing to think about here is the fact that these friends recognized a need in this person's life. They recognized that this person needed a touch from Jesus. And they didn't just say, hey, you should be touched by Jesus and go on. They didn't just say, hey, you know, I heard Jesus can heal and then go on. They understood that this person needed more. He needed help to find his way to Jesus and they decided they would be the ones that would help. They would be the ones that would bring him and they were not casual about it. In other words, if they had been very casual about it, they would have brought him and said, well, you know, we tried. But we can't get in the door. I'm sorry we got this close, but... You know, hey, maybe on his way out he'll see you here and we're going to leave you right here. He, they didn't do that. They recognized that their friend had a need. They recognized their friend needed Jesus and they were willing to do whatever it took. For those of us today, we look around and we have friends and family, co-workers, acquaintances. And we know that what, what's going on in their life, what they really need is Jesus. But instead of being willing to bring them to Jesus, we casually mention, hey, you should try coming to church. Hey, maybe you should, you know, read the Bible. Hey, you know, I want to invite you, and that's as far as we go. These friends didn't stop there. They went and physically brought him to Jesus. 
Yes, he could not walk. But what if it was a different infirmity? What if it was something else going on in their life? What if they just said, hey, you're coming with us today? They brought him to Jesus and they were so adamant about what they were going to do that even when there was barricades, they couldn't get past all these people that were in the way. They said, we've got to get him to Jesus. Do you feel that way about people in your life? Do you have that burning desire in your life for other people? Maybe you have a burning desire. You know you need Jesus, but you haven't come to him yet. Are we willing to do whatever it takes to bring people to Jesus? They obviously cared about him. They were willing to do whatever it was to get him to Jesus. So why was this the case? Why were they willing to do whatever it took to get him to Jesus? Why? Well, think about this. Perhaps everything else they had done didn't work. Maybe they had, you know, they had traveling healers during that day. People that traveled around selling their potions. Maybe they tried them all. Maybe they'd called doctors to come and see. Maybe they'd even called the priest to come and see him, but nothing worked. Maybe they had tried everything they could and nothing else worked, but they saw that Jesus was the answer. Maybe those are the things that they tried. Maybe they had gotten to that point and decided that this is the only thing we can do. We've seen Jesus. We have believed in him. We know that he can heal. But whatever it was, whatever it was, it was important enough to them that they knew they had to get him to Jesus. And they didn't stop. They didn't stop. They went up on the roof. Now the roof wasn't like the roofs of our houses today. There's no shingles and, and wood and you know all of that sort of stuff. The roofs were mud and, and, and straw. They were baked in the sun and hardened so that when the rain came, it didn't leak. They went up and they dug a hole in the roof. They dug a hole in the roof. And if you've ever seen a representation of it, Jesus is speaking, people are around him, he's inside the house, and suddenly mud and straw and things began to fall down from the roof, and people are looking up, what's going on? Got their attention. I have to believe that it really was that way, that as this is happening, everybody began to look and see, what's going on here? And suddenly, this man comes down basically on a, on a pallet, and they had him tied with a rope, and they lowered him, down in front of Jesus. Now we don't see anywhere that they lowered him down and said, hey Jesus, he needs you to heal him because he's paralyzed. We didn't see anywhere where he said, Jesus, I'm paralyzed, will you please give me a touch? We didn't see any of that. It says they lowered him down and Jesus looked at him and immediately knew what he needed. He looked at him and immediately knew what he needed and he did not say, get up and walk. You see, Jesus knows the true healing we need. Oh, we may think that the healing we need is, I need to be healed from my back problems. My back hurts so bad and I just need Jesus to touch me and make my back all better. That's what I need. I, what I need is for, for, to be healed from a relationship issue or something else that's going on. That's what I really need. Jesus looks and he sees what you need. In this case, he looked at this man and immediately he said, your sins are forgiven. He said, your sins are forgiven. Do you have this kind of love for people today? Do you have this kind of love that you're willing to go and get them and bring them to Jesus? That you're going, willing to go and sit down in their house and share John 3, 16 and 17 with them? That you're willing to continue to invite them and try to get them to see Jesus even when they say, I don't want to talk about that? Do you have that kind of love? Listen, this guy perhaps had already determined that this was his lot in life. He was never going to be healed and he never had any desire. But his friends came and brought him to Jesus. For every person that's sitting here today that knows Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, 
Somebody introduced you. Somebody introduced you. Somebody told you about him. The thing I want us to see today is this faith of his friends is what allowed this man to be healed. When he was lowered onto the floor, Jesus didn't say, your faith has made you well. He said, your sins are forgiven. In fact, he didn't even address the friends. He didn't say anything to them. But without them, the man never would have been there. You see, sometimes we only want to do things when we get recognition. I'm so glad you brought them to church. If it wasn't for you, that might be true, but it's not about you. It's about that lost soul that needs to know Jesus. Do you have this kind of love for people today? Are you willing to do whatever it takes to get people in front of Jesus? If you know Jesus, then you know what it means. So shouldn't we be like these men today and do just what they did and get people in? Shouldn't we be doing that? Shouldn't we be striving, trying to get them here? Jesus is the healer. Here's the crazy thing. You have a family member that has something, whatever it might be. Maybe they seem to have some heart problems or they have some mobility issues or they have... You'll go out of your way to get those people in a car and take them to the doctor to try to do whatever you can to help them get over whatever is hurting, whatever is not working properly, whatever's going on in their life. You'll do whatever it takes to try to get those people to be physically healed. But we don't fight that hard for people to be spiritually healed. Well, I tried to talk to them. They didn't want to hear it. Okay, I tried to talk to them about it. I tried to get them to, to see they need Jesus, but they didn't want to talk about it. Or, well, I invited them to church a few years ago, but, you know, they didn't come. Why is it that we can be so adamant about getting them to somewhere to receive physical healing, but when it comes to receiving spiritual healing, why did we stop there? Why did we just invite them one time and they didn't come? Well, I guess they don't want to come. I invited them once. I, you know, I tried to talk to them. They said they didn't want to hear it. So we don't talk about it anymore. And I get it. Most of the time what happens is, you know, we're going to see this family and it's a, usually a festive occasion. Maybe we're going to visit them for Christmas or we're going for Thanksgiving or we're going over for Fourth of July or whatever. We're getting together for some. And the last thing we want is to have arguments during this time that we're visiting. So we brought it up. They said, I don't want to talk about it. We left it alone because we don't want the conflict. I get that. You just want to enjoy the family. You want to enjoy the time together. But if we knew that they had a heart issue, that if we didn't get them to the doctor today, they're going to die. We're not going to take no for an answer if we have to physically load them in the vehicle and take them ourselves. If they don't know Jesus, they have a heart issue that must be healed. They have something that is going on that if they die with that, there's an eternity in hell. Why did we stop there? Why do we just say, well, I tried. Check that box. I, I tried. You know what? The preacher gave me one of these invite cards. I gave it to them. They didn't come, so, you know, I did my part. I did my part. These friends didn't stop by saying, hey, I wish Jesus would come by here and heal you. They picked him up. They carried him to Jesus. They physically brought him to Jesus. But we stopped simply by inviting them. Some people are hurting so badly, and they just don't want you to know about it. That's why they don't want to talk about Jesus. When you say, hey, I want to tell you about Jesus, I don't want to hear it. They're hurt. Something happened. Something in their life happened. For many people, you talk about church and they say, I'm not going to church. Nothing but a bunch of hypocrites up there. You see, sometime in their past, they were in church and they saw something that hurt their feelings because someone who they respected they saw them doing something that wasn't appropriate 
and they realized that that person was human. But instead, they held it against the church. I'm never going back into that place because of what I saw. There are some that are hurting so badly because their loved one, some, their, their wife, their husband divorced them and they always went to church together. And I don't want anything to do with Jesus anymore because if he was really somebody that would take care of me, why would I go through that? Why would he allow that to happen? Why would I be divorced now if he truly loved me? Why would that even be the case? I don't want to talk about that. You know what? If Jesus really cared, why did he let my loved one die? I prayed for him in the hospital. I prayed for him at home. I prayed for him every day, and they still died. And so there's a lot of hurt in people's life, and they don't want to talk about it. They don't want to talk about it. But they need to talk about it. This person that was paralyzed, he probably figured, why am I the one that's afflicted? Why am I the one that's going through all this? Why me? How come I'm the one? I, I, all these other people. Maybe it's something that they did. Maybe there's something they did in their life and they're saying, God's never going to forgive me. He's never going to forgive me. Do you know what I did? You'll never believe what I did. I did this or I did that. There's no way that God's ever going to forgive me. He's never going to heal that hurt because I deserve it. I don't want you to talk to me about Jesus. I don't want you to talk to me about his healing power, his forgiveness of sin. I don't want to talk about all that because I did whatever it was and there's no way that he's going to heal me. Or do you know what somebody did to me? Do you know that as a child I was molested? Do you know that as, a, as an adult somebody came into my house and, and they killed my wife? Do you understand that these things that happen, there's no way that I can be ever healed from that. So don't talk to me about the healer. Don't talk to me about Jesus. I don't want to hear that. Listen, they need him more than ever. He's the only one that can heal that. Maybe it's massive grief over someone they lost. Maybe it's massive grief over a divorce, over a relationship, over a fractured friendship. People don't think about those things being grief. Grief is what you feel when there's a loss. It can be a loss through death. It can be a loss through divorce. It can be a loss through a fractured friendship. It can be a loss of a job. All of these things, when you have these losses, you feel this grief. And people are sometimes going through this grief so badly that they don't want to hear about anything. But if we stop there, Who's going to tell them? How are they going to be reached? How are they going to be healed? The point is, if you know Jesus, then you know the one with the power to heal all, all things. If you know Jesus, you know the one that has the power to heal all things. If you found out that there was a doctor in Mobile, Alabama that can heal every heart issue that anybody ever had. No matter how skeptical anybody was, no matter how hard they fought it, no matter how hard that they said, I'm not going, you would get them there somehow to heal that heart issue if they had one. You would do that. We know the one that can heal all things. And listen, I understand. Sometimes people just absolutely fight it the faith that these men had they took this man they carried him we don't even know how far we assume it was quite a distance they carried him they climbed up on the roof they dug through the and listen it wasn't just a little bit of mud it was a lot of mud they dug through the thatch the mud everything and made a hole big enough to lower their friend in they brought him in to the healer because they knew he could do it they knew he could heal him they knew it would be done. Maybe you're here today and that's you that's broken. Maybe you're here today because you're simply trying to find anything that might help. 
Maybe the pain has been so great that your friends and family don't even know what you're going through. There's a place out in West Mobile called the Mission of Hope. Nobody's forced to go there. They're invited. When they arrive, there's a sign. Cross this bridge to Jesus. They go in. And many of them, you find out the reason that they're having such a problem with drugs and alcohol is because there's a pain in their life and they don't know how to make it better. And so they've tried to self-medicate with drugs and alcohol because if they can do that, it makes them forget for a period of time what they've been going through. But the problem is when they get sober, the, the problem is still there. Whatever it is in their life is still there. It hasn't been healed. It's only been covered up. If you know Jesus, you know the one that has the power to heal all things. All things. There are people that are so good at hiding what's going on in their life. Maybe you came here today and you are the one with the struggles, but nobody knows because you know what? You put on a brave face. And the only time that any of this hurt, this grief, this pain, this emptiness that you're going through only shows up when you're all alone because you can put on a brave face when you're with someone else. Maybe people don't know what's going on with you. But you know. Maybe you're watching today and you know. You know the pain. You know the things that are happening in your life and you want healing. There's one that can heal all things. Jesus. He is the healer. You see, when he came into town and he came to Jerusalem... He looked at the people as he came in and he felt compassion for them. Even on the cross, Jesus felt compassion for the people. He healed so many people by his touch, by his words, by what he did. If you are the one that is struggling, you've come to the right place today. Look at verse 20. Seeing their faith, understand Jesus didn't see the man's faith. Seeing their faith, the friends, he said, friend, your sins are forgiven you. Your sins are forgiven you. Jesus can forgive sins. Seeing their faith, Jesus told the man, his sins were forgiven. Are you willing to have that kind of faith to help someone be healed today? Are you willing to do that? Are you willing in your own faith to do it? It was because they had faith that the one that they brought was healed. That the one that they brought was healed. Today, if you have faith... The one you bring to Jesus just might be healed. The one you share the gospel with just might accept it. They may not. You may share the gospel and you say, Preacher, I shared the gospel with them. And they said, No. Sometimes it takes a long time to get past the massive hurt, the massive pain that a person is dealing with. We know George Mueller said he prayed for a friend of his for over 40 years. Over 40 years! And the friend still didn't come to know Jesus until he passed away. Until George Mueller passed away, his friend finally came to know Jesus. I shared the gospel with them and they refused it. What am I supposed to do now? Share it again. They don't want to hear it. I know. I know. And I don't mean you take your Bible every time you go over there and you beat them around the head with it. But you share the gospel. If you shared it to them directly and they didn't accept, share it to them indirectly by living it in front of them. 
Then try again to share it to them directly later. Find a moment when they might be vulnerable and they might need to let their guard down at that point. It was because these men had faith that the one they brought was healed. They brought this man at a time when he couldn't do anything else but go with them. But perhaps if you have the faith, then someone you know can be healed. They can be healed from pain, addiction, grief, anger, all sin. They can be healed from any of that. Oftentimes the reason people do not accept Jesus when they hear the gospel is they're afraid. What if it's true? <laughs> They've told me that I could be healed from this. What if it's true? What if I am healed? That's going to change everything. That's going to change my whole life. I, I, I won't even know what to do. How, if I'm healed from this addiction, how can I hang out with these friends that are still addicted? I can't. I'm going to have to go find new friends. I don't want to have to go through that. If I'm healed from this infirmity that I have, I'll no longer have to see these doctors all the time. I don't know how I would live life without that. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm afraid that if my life changes so drastically, maybe I should just stay the way I am because I'm afraid. Listen, fear is a powerful thing, but it is not as powerful as God. When we trust Him, He will heal us, and when He heals us, He will take care of us. I can't even imagine this man who up to this point in his life had been paralyzed. How did this man make a living? Lying on a mat begging for something. Begging for coins, begging for something in order to support himself because he couldn't work. Now suddenly this man, his sins are forgiven and Jesus said, pick up your bed and walk. And he walked out, his whole life changed. Now he's, he's, he's healed. Now what does he do? I don't, I don't know how to live this way. He had to trust Jesus. He had to trust that he would show him this new way. Understand that every person who comes to know Jesus Christ is healed and they become a new creation in Christ. You remember the baptism that we just had last week? Buried in baptism, raised to walk in a newness of life. He says, in Christ you are a new creation and he shows us how to walk in a new life. Not the same as before, but a new life. He shows us. He doesn't heal us and throw us out. He shows us what we need to do. Jesus is the healer that can heal all the pain, all the addiction, all the grief, all the sin. Here's the amazing thing. You go to a doctor and you have whatever problem. I don't know. You have a broken arm. You go to the doctor and he puts a cast on it and he does all his thing and your arm is healed and later on, hey, my arm is healed. It's so much better. I'm so glad I went to the doctor and got this arm healed. But you know what? That arm could be broken again. When Jesus heals, he heals eternally. He heals eternally. He gives you salvation and he heals you completely for all eternity. There is no possibility that you could return to be without him once he's healed you and you've accepted him. He says that nothing can take you out of his hand once you have been healed and you have accepted him. It's an eternal healing. It's not a short-term thing. So a question I have for you today is, have you been healed by Jesus? Have you been healed by Jesus? Have you done what the paralytic did? When he was healed by Jesus, you know what he did? He went out shouting and healing. I meant shouting and, and glorifying God. Have you been healed by Jesus? If you have, have you done what the paralytic did by going out and telling others about him? That's the first thing he did is go tell other people. He went out glorifying God, it says. Or... Today, are you still searching for healing? Jesus can and will heal you. He'll heal all things if you give it to him. So today, will you come to the healer today? Will you do that? Or will you continue to live 
in the infirmities, infirmities that you have? Will you continue to walk opposite of God, walk without him, walk in a way that you do not have eternal salvation? Or will you come today and be healed permanently for all of eternity? Will you come today and receive the salvation that you so desperately need? Perhaps today, the whole message, there's been someone on your mind, a person on your mind that you thought to yourself, yeah, that's who he's talking about. I need to talk to them. I need to share the gospel with them. I don't want to wonder if they are going to spend an eternity in heaven or hell. I need to tell them. Maybe there's someone on your heart. In just a moment, I'm going to open up the invitation. And first and foremost, if you need that healing today, that salvation, I'd like for you to come talk to me about it. I want to tell you how you can receive it. Secondly, if there's someone on your heart that God just put them on your heart from the moment we started talking, I want to ask you to bring their name to the altar. Bring it to the altar and give it to God right here and ask him to show you how to reach that person. What do you need to do to help them to see him? Bring their name to God. That's the most important thing you can do. Maybe there's something else going on in your life and you just feel you need to come to the altar. It'll be open. Whatever it is. Let's pray.